A Fosis and Matt once again. Welcome back to another review of another shitty direct to video film. And I know Driven the Kill, from what I understand, people consider one of the better direct to video Sadol films, but I disagree. I, I think this is a pretty damn bad one. Yeah, not as bad as Attack Force or fucking Today You Die. Or some other stuff, but still, yes, a goal doing, in my opinion, a really bad Russian accent. Sometimes not his fucking voice, sometimes it is his fucking voice. But even when it is, even when it is his voice, is it to me a shitty Russian accent? This is a guy who I love his accent in Out for Justice, which is my favorite Seagull film. This accent, no, I don't. I don't buy him as a Russian, and the whole beginning, oh, pretty much. He was a former enforcer in the Russian mob. He abandoned it to become a novelist. Yeah, he's a novelist. Yeah, and I'm fucking Superman, but this opening scene is so weird because it's a goal. A lot of times, not his voice again. Or it's a bad Russian accent he's having. It's, or both. It's one then the other. Do your own fucking ADR dubbing. Don't let someone else do your own fucking voice. And stop doing accents. Not Cajun accents. Southern accents. If you want to do an accent, do the Brooklyn accent if I'm out for justice. Or just do your own voice. But anyway, he's talking to this girl. And this girl keeps asking him about this trick with a metal spike underneath cups and how did you know which had the metal spike spike underneath teach me that trick and she goes if you show me and teach me that trick not only can you fuck me but you can fuck my friend she doesn't use the word fuck but you, you can not only have me but you have my friend well i hope her fucking friends uh i guess her well i her friends don't be fucking surprised by that deal. So Seagal does his trick and he pretty much slams his hand against one and it's not the one with the spike. It, here's the cup with the spike in it. And he goes, the, the trick was just not to give a fuck. Which is funny because that's the line of dialogue with not his voice. So that's very, that's perfect. The trick was not to give a fuck. It's not even his voice which shows how much he did not give a fuck about most of his, 99% of his directed video career. He did not give a fuck. So this must be like an autobiography that was lying. The trick was just not to give a fuck. It's just ironic that it's, the, the, that line is said by a voice that's not his voice, which is a typical problem in most of his directed video films. And the reason it's not his voice is because he didn't want to show up for ADR to go over that dialogue because he didn't give a fuck. I know I'm beating a dead horse, but Seagal's a fucking fat horse to beat. You're being too harsh. No, I'm not. You sit your ass down and watch every one of Seagal's directed video films, and then you tell me whether I'm being harsh. So, Van Damme's directed video stuff was not this bad. I know, I did a reviews for them. I have a playlist of all my Van Damme reviews. It plays directed video. A lot of his directed video stuff was fun. Dolph, same thing. Yeah, once in a while you get a shitter in the bunch, but. There's a lot of good ones here. There's barely any good ones. Or decent ones, I should say. Hell, the next scene you have a cab driver. It's a white guy, and he's dubbed by a black guy. There's a black guy's voice coming out of this white cab driver. Don't believe me, watch the film. The first time in the movie you see a cab driver talking, and Seagal's in the back, it's a black guy's voice coming out of this white cab driver.
he goes to see a friend saying he's back in town. He's back in town because his daughter's getting married. He's going to go see her. And, you know, the guy gives him this water cash. I'm not sure if it's this scene or another scene. Gives him this water cash which has like a little gun, which he'll use later. But then these guys try to fuck with him. So all like takes a, a glass cup, puts it here. It sort of does this. Which I like that idea, but it's kind of shitty editing in the scene. But smashes in the guy's head with his palm. Tells another guy who's scared to get on his knees. And then kicks him. You have more bad dubbing in ADR by... Again, whoever does these dubs of Sadol's voice should get fucking cold credit and should get some of Sadol's paycheck, honestly. But he's a novelist. Uh, his ex-wife is with this asshole who slaps her. And the, the guy who's the asshole who's with his ex... If you've ever seen the X-Files TV show, there are there's an episode called Pusher. And it's the guy who pushes people against their will to do his bidding. And the end of the episode, he makes Mulder try to kill himself and Stoli's there trying to help. That guy, Pusher, is in this movie as the asshole ex that slaps the, the woman. And of course, obviously, he's going to be one of our bad guys. His daughter is marrying the son of this Russian gangster, and the son is a decent guy. These bad guys come in. His Sadal's ex-wife is killed. His daughter's hurt badly. It's funny that Sadal is giving orders to cops, and they're pretty much listening. I'm like, this guy's not a cop, and you're taking orders as if he's the chief of police. And then he goes, don't say my... You can't say that my daughter's alive. Even though these people don't know who the fuck Seagal is, and he's, again, he tried to go in, pretend he was a cop, and then a female cop said, wait a minute, that's my badge. What are you doing with it? He's immediately giving orders and they're listening. <laughs> As if he did, he's the chief of police. I just like, well, he's Seagal, so we better listen to him, because he's the star of the movie. And he's, yeah, don't, my daughter's alive, Tell them that she's dead so that she doesn't get hurt. And then you have this like really over dramatic push into Sagal's eyes. Like da na na da na na da na 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 That's not the music. I don't remember the fucking music, so I made up my own, but it's a very dramatic push into Sagal's eyes, which is pretty laughable. Um, while the fiance of his daughter keeps asking, What happened? That's what it was like, What happened? And then this is pushing the skull's eyes while that guy's saying, What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Fucking. Sagol go so go goes to this place to get some guns, tries to pay. The bad guys here, which you find out later, they were texted and told that Seagal's a cop, which he isn't. But they believe the text, and so they try to shoot Seagal. Seagal has that tiny gun in that water cache, shoots two of them, shoots another in the head with a regular gun. And, and that seemed like the shitty song plays. He beats up, punch and kicks this one guy, beats him the... F I don't know. If it was, it, it's a... I don't want to say a stick, but sort of something that fell apart when he threw this guy and he picked up and beat the shit out of him with it. And he says, told you I wasn't a cop, bitch. And then he looks at the phone and realizes that the pusher from X-Files, I don't remember his fucking name, so I'll just say pusher from X-Files, the guy who was the, with his ex-wife, who's an asshole. The wife was an asshole, pusher was an asshole. Of course he is. He's Pusher from X-Files. I think he always plays a bad guy. But he follows his lead of this ring that he had given to his daughter for the wedding because it was a family heirloom or such and this pawn shop owner's being an asshole and he fucks up the guy's face, breaks his nose. 
him and the fiance of his daughter go somewhere else and Sadol's like shooting outside they get people scared and you know, a little bit of gunfire in a hallway finds this one guy and the fiance's scared and shoots the guy and Sadol gets pissed you know, we need information now we have fucking nothing well I'm sorry Sadol you didn't tell the fucking guy you just said stay with me stay behind me and shouldn't have given him a fucking gun in the first place then and then this, then they go, they find something on the guy that leads to this strip club. And I found this really funny because he's, he's having this serious conversation with the fiance because the fiance guy has never killed anyone before. He's the son of a Russian mobster, but he doesn't want that life. And he's, first time he's killed and Stroll's talking about how, how hard killing is and you never forget it. They're having this serious conversation. The meanwhile, this fucking woman showing her tits is dancing in front of them and, you know, sh fucking giving them a strip dance. <laughs> You're having this serious conversation about killing and the first time to kill someone and while a woman is dancing with her tits out. Fucking. <laughs> Again, that, that has to be with Sigal's contract. Every movie, a woman's got to show her tits and have, you know, have a stripper or something. Again, I've heard many behind-the-scenes stories from directors. He likes the prostitutes. And a lot of stories of sexual harassment, so maybe, maybe. Some bad guys get in the strip club. You have a little bit of fighting. Sadol gets in a little bit of knife fight. Knife's one in the net. This dies. A little bit of extended knife fight. Uh, but a lot of these fight scenes stop being so fucking close. Back to the fuck up. Let's have some wide shots, please. I know there's one thing I haven't mentioned in a lot of these reviews. But stop having fight scenes so fucking close. A lot of times they do that because it's a fucking fight double. So they insert Sigal's face. I don't think that was done here, but I could be wrong. I could very much be wrong. Wouldn't surprise me. But like the fight, the knife fight scene under siege. It was one sided, but it was fun. Shot well. Here it just. Jeff F. Keen, who I think was the director of Kill Switch, it wasn't really shot that well, honestly. Pretty much a boring knife fight, cuts the guy in the face, and then kills the guy. And it seems like when he stabs the guy, it pulls out like a gush of blood comes out. And they found out that the fiance's father, because he's the son of a Russian mobster, that guy was behind it because he hates the doll. You have this one little fight where he slams a guy against, you know, those needles that you put notes in? He kind of slams them against that. One of those slams that cuts away the guys in there so you don't, like, get a impact moment, which would be nice. But if this was nice, I wouldn't be ranting on it, would I? You have this little action scene in the parking garage where Sigal does the thing where he turns the shotgun and shoots the guy. Which, the, I'm sorry, the best one of that is still on Deadly Ground when he did that to Arlie Ermey. It was a shot wide enough and well enough. And really enough, Steven Sigal directed that. You directed that movie so you knew, and all those fight scenes are really wide shots. So he knew that's the best way to shoot it. Why doesn't he do that in these movies then? You directed a movie where the fight scenes are sh wide. That's one of the reasons why I really enjoy On Daily Ground. Those action scenes and fight scenes are shot very wide, as they should be, when you're doing that kind of thing. Up close combat, hand to hand style. But he, so many of these directed video films, that doesn't happen. When they do, it's really fucking rare. 
That sucks. So, one thing leads to another. He's chasing one guy, and they get in this little fight, which, you know, at one point, Seagal puts this thing in the guy's neck, and Seagal keeps punching him. Because, like most Seagal fights, it's going to be one side. Seagal rarely, if ever, gets hurt. Once in a while, he gets shot or stabbed in a movie, and it brushes off as if it's nothing. But um, for the most part, he, become, he comes out of it with no scratches. Again, once in a blue moon, he gets a scratch or something. But, uh, hell, you compare that with Van Damme. When he fought Scott Atkins the Chevrolet Border Patrol, he was getting his ass kicked in quite a few other films. Hell, look at Cyborg. He got his ass kicked by Fender. Fender, fucker. He got fucking crucified in Cyborg. <laughs> Which led to one of my favorite scenes in that movie. And I like Cyborg than any directed video Seagal film. Even the ones I like. Urban Justice Pistol Whip. Cyborg to me is better than all of them. Combined. That's how much I like Cyborg and Van Damme. So I will admit, I'm more of a Van Damme than Seagal. But I love Seagal's early work. I should say this for to the very end when I come talk about Seagal. But... I love Seagal's early work, but these directed video films are just dragging me down to really hating Seagal. Just his laziness and the fight scenes. Most of them in his directed video films are poorly edited, or it's just fight doubles, or they're poorly shot, or they're too up fucking close. God damn, man. The ending's at a hospital to protect his daughter because they found out she's there. A little bit of gunfire in the hospital. Uh, one grenade is thrown and some blown up. Sigal like makes this bomb with shrapnel, pushes it, and fucks up one guy. Just a little fight with the bad guy where it ends with him taking the gun, slamming it right into the guy's eye. And then it ends with him, his daughter, and his daughter's fiance all coming out of it okay. I don't really understand why this film is considered one of Seagal's better directed video movies. I mean, yeah, again, yeah, it's not as god awful, my god, what the fuck, as Kill Switch or Today You Die or A Dead the Dark. I guess the dark, honestly, is just more. I guess that's just more sad to me. As I, yeah, I said in that rant, yeah, it gets a five point two. I don't really know why it's that high, five point two. People go, that's high for you? Yeah, or for this kind of movie, it's. I don't know why this gets a five point two. I have no idea. Bad Russian accent. That's when it, it is his voice. Otherwise, bad ADR dubbing. That's not his voice. Fight scenes really aren't much to... Like, best to go in a long time. What? How? Why? Like this guy says, the biggest pro... Well, it's not the biggest, but... A lot of the supporting performances are pretty lame. Yeah, the score, there's some upbeat Russian folk music during certain scenes. I remember that now. That was pretty crappy. Because it has little to none of the unintentional comedic incompetence. See, even right here it says, one with no obvious stunt body doubles or voice dubbing. There is obvious voice dubbing. And I'm sorry, the direction isn't competent. The fight scenes... Like, for anyone who's watched the film, do you remember any of the fight scenes after you've watched the film? No? Then that says something. It's just... Driven the... You know, that title, Driven the Kill, is pretty apt. Because the more I continue to watch these shitty directed video Steven's Gold movies, the more I will be driven to kill someone. Maybe... It's a joke, folks. Relapse. Not serious. It's not real life. 
On the one hand, on the other hand, yeah, I will be driven to kill by a tum and dumb watching these fucking sh goddamn direct video Seagal movies. Yeah, I'm tired of talking. Fuck it.